Uh, the costs of cancelling the Silvertown Tunnel are not fixed and are commercially sensitive, as they would have to be negotiated with Riverlinks should a termination be discussed or decided by the courts by way of compensation payable for breach of contract. In line with standard commercial practice, the Silvertown Tunnel Project Agreement provides for compensation of costs incurred and loss of expected profits, less payments received. In general terms, as this is a design, build, finance and maintain agreement, there would be costs associated with cancellation of the loans put in place by the winning consortium to finance the construction in line with normal practice for this sort of agreement. I know there's been a lot of misinformation on this from some members of the Assembly, so it's important to be clear. Cancellation would not save TfL any money or allow it to reallocate any funds. Cancelling would in fact incur significant costs to TfL, placing additional pressure on TfL's finances at what is already an extremely difficult time. The Silverton Tunnel will bring widespread benefits to London, particularly to East London, and is much cheaper than cancellation. The Blackwall Tunnel, which is the only current alternative, was not designed to cope with today's traffic levels as a Victorian tunnel built for horses and carriages. It has to be closed on average around 700 times a year, and if it closes even for six minutes, the queue quickly extends to three miles. By finally addressing this long-standing issue, the new tunnel will massively reduce congestion in the area, which has a negative impact on air quality and productivity, as well as supporting economic growth in East London. The project will enable a step change in cross river bus connectivity in that part of the city, resulting in the proportion of trips by public transport on the Blackwall Silvertown corridor increasing from 10% today to 30% once the new tunnel is in operation, a threefold increase in public transport with a Silvertown tunnel. In fact, one of the most unreliable buses in London is the single decker 108, which has to rely on the Blackwall tunnel to get from one side of the river to the other. As all of this will improve air quality in areas that currently experience some of the worst air quality in London, owing to frequent lengthy queuing at the Blackwall Tunnel. Baseline air quality monitoring commenced in December 2020, and TfL is developing a comprehensive monitoring programme to ensure the effects of the Silvertown Tunnel scheme are fully understood. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, now, the good news is I don't want to argue with you today about the case for cancellation of the Silvertown Tunnel. I want to really focus on the question of the cost of cancellation today. And the reason I'm asking is it's a democratic one. The Assembly has the power to amend your budget early in 2022. And in previous years, in fact, back to 2011, because the scheme was originally put forward by Mayor Boris Johnson, the Green Group on the Assembly has put forward amendments that do cancel the Silvertown Tunnel. We've made savings by doing that before, removing Transport for London's development costs each time. Now, since you've signed the contract to build it, we've not been able to do this because, as you, as you point out, the cost of cancellation is now what we have to put into the new budget, and that cost is being kept secret. Now, I do believe you have a duty to be transparent with the Assembly about this so that we can consider it in the budget process, including how we might find funding for it and other financial considerations, such as the amount of money we'd save Londoners on tolling fees. So again, can I ask you, can we have a usable estimate from you that we can use in our work on the budget? Will you write to me with that estimate? I, I don't need to, you, you just go to the Oversight Committee. This, this information has been shared with the Oversight Committee. Uh, it's been reviewed by TfL's auditors, Ernst and uh, Young. Mr. Mayor, with shared. respect, I have the auditors report here, TF, and TF. this is the pages that outline the, the cost of cancellation. They're entirely redacted. T TfL have shared full details uh, that they're able to do so. Some aspects of this are public and the contract is available on the website. This explains the general concept of how such costs would be calculated. And as I've said, the costs aren't fixed. Uh, and as I've explained, TfL's estimates are commercially sensitive and cannot be made uh, public. And if you think about it logically, you must be able to appreciate why. The idea that you would uh, make public uh, the consequences of a breach of contract, which is what's been suggested by the amendment from the Greens, is clearly nonsensical. Who would do that? I mean, you described before how it needs to be negotiated, and I've actually put together a number. Um, obviously, you know, we, we've agreed to give in um, tolling fees um, to the Riverlinks contractor um, around 2.5 
billion pounds. And we know that the construction costs are about one billion pounds. We're also taking on about 200 million pounds worth of costs that are in our own budgets as well um, for additional construction. Um, you can assume that the, you know, the, the remaining 1.5 billion, that's, that's a mixture of things like financing costs for the, for the contractors, but also profits. And you can come up with an estimate of like, even if we gave the most of the profits back as part of the negotiations, you might come up with a figure something like 350 million pounds. If I put that number to you, would you agree that we could use that in a budget estimate? Chair, I've got to say this in a way that doesn't appear patronising, but the naivety of the chair of TfL saying publicly a figure that TfL would be liable to in a claim for breach of contract. I'm asking for an in, estimate um, today, what, Mr. Mayor, not a figure. Well, I'm not giving you an estimate because the reasons that I've got, I've got a fiduciary duty. Uh, but I'd, I'd hope that as a member of the Assembly, uh, you would understand the consequences of making public uh, what the liabilities potentially could be for either a breach of contract or, and also the idea of negotiated in public through Mayor's question time, what could be liable to a private company, I think just demonstrates uh, why with respect Londoners were right to reject you twice when you stood to be Mayor. I have no further questions, but it's very disappointing that we're being denied the opportunity to do this democratic thing that we're entitled to do every year. Thank you. Okay.